You want to support Roller March Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to rollermartinunfiltered.com. You can make this possible. Um, Mitch McConnell and the Senate, they didn't give a damn about doing anything for the people impacted by COVID-19. Their focus was simply on confirming more federal judges. Right. 225. They pushed through five in the last week. Now, when you start looking at these judges, right wing, largely white men, between the ages of 35 and 45, because they want to control the federal bench for the next 30 to 50 years. These are very conservative judges. A number of them have been rated grossly unqualified by the American Bar Association. They have been chosen by the Federalist Society, the right-wing legal group who, again, uh, wants to control the federal bench. Well, you got some black folks in it. So F. Lee Francis decided to email me on LinkedIn because he felt that, no, this is Trump is getting a bad rap when it comes to these judges. They are about the law. So he joins us right now. First of all, F. Lee Francis, uh, are, you, are you embarrassed by the behavior of Donald Trump uh, as, as it stands right now when it comes to how he is acting regarding the transition with Joe Biden actually beating him and how he is denying uh, the, the incoming administration information? Well, well, first, Roland, thank you uh, for having me. But, but, but here's the deal. I, I think it's clear that we have a president, and, and I think it's clear that there should be um, a, a smooth transition uh, of power. Uh, what I don't think is appropriate for our country uh, is that uh, the media, or, and to a certain extent the president, President Trump, play up this... Uh, Fraud, you know, he's he's well within his right. I'm sorry, you said the media. To... Which media? Well, th th there's no secret that the general media has been uh, very much opposed to Trump's. No, 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 you, no, no. Hold up, hold up. I quoted you. You said the media playing up this fraud. Which media? Well, by virtue of of discussing it. It's clear that the voters have decided. So the more the media engages in this discussion, uh, the more they are giving it credibility. So hold on, I'm second. I'm sorry. Hold up. So who held a one-hour news conference yesterday? And of the three of the three of the six broadcast and cable networks, which one of them broadcast the whole hour? Which one? I, I think but my point is again. I think I, I'm agreeing with you. It was here. Fox. It was Fox News. So the people who are actually playing this up. Is Fox News, OAN, Newsmax, and conservative media? That's who's actually it, playing it up. It's actually been debunked by real journalists. We forget that Fox News was the first one to call uh, places like Arizona, uh, and, and they were you know, right. They were right, but what do we have? We have people who are conservative saying, "Well, they shouldn't have done that." But but the, the point is, we need to move past this for our country to to, to move on. It's clear that the, the voters have, have decided. If there are issues of fraud, those will be investigated. Those will be, will, will be found out uh, during uh, court hearings. But, but it's clear who, who the winner is. Actually, they've, had, they've lost literally 30 times in federal court. And each time they've gone into court, they've presented no evidence of fraud. They've been shot down every time. In fact, they just... They then went to court and confused voters in Minnesota with voters in Michigan. Well, again, I think we have to first figure out what, what we're talking about when we say fraud. Uh, no, 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 we don't. When, Rudy Giuliani well, and his crack legal team does. Well, let's understand, you know, you have places like North Carolina. There are several counties in North Carolina uh, that counted ballots twice uh, that did not count uh, early vote ballot. So maybe that's not necessarily fraud, but what we do need to figure that's out... That's not fraud! Is how to hold on, hold on, stop, stop. Uh, do, me a favor. do me a favor. If you're going to say we need to cite what's fraud, then cite what's fraud. Now, when you say they counted ballots twice, was that discovered? That, that was discovered, was yeah. it? What, what, okay, did they explain, was it an accident? What happened there? 
it, 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 I guess my point is, regardless of if it's an accident, we need to understand that there is a process that, that takes place that needs to, that this election needs to be secure. But who won North so Carolina? Who won North Carolina? Well, President Trump did. But so my so if there is, was any voter fraud, happening. if there was any voter fraud in North Carolina, why is the Trump team suing North Carolina? Why are they only well, suing what black people are? I think that's their prerogative. I can't get into the mind of their legal team. Trust me, I, I don't think, think they have much mind because that news conference yesterday really revealed that. But the real deal, though, is this here. And I got to ask you this here. Do you consider yourself a conservative or a Republican? I consider myself to be a conservative. I, I don't know that there is a uh, that it's helpful to make a distinction between the two. No, actually, it is uh, because you could be a conservative Democrat and a conservative Republican. So, are you a Republican or a Democrat? I am a Republican. Are you embarrassed by the Republican Party, the entire Republican Party apparatus, who refuses to call out Donald Trump? Mitt Romney released a statement. Ben Sass has made some comments. But literally, the Republican Party, they had the news conference yesterday at the Republican National Committee. Rona McDaniel, the chair, has going on and on with lockstep with Donald Trump. Is it embarrassing as a black Republican to watch Republicans say nothing, not and criticize Donald Trump, as opposed to stand up to him and say, enough is enough, you lost. I think your own point was a little uh, contradicted by what you said, where you start off by saying all Republicans. But I didn't say all Republicans. Romney, I said Republicans. I said staff. most Republicans. I was very clear. Most Republicans. I, I specifically cited two. So, so out so of 52, my, my out is, of 52 in the Senate, only two have come out aggressively saying, Trump, you're wrong. What's up with the again, other 50? I think you're, you're wrong about that. If we look at what happened, listen to Susan Collins, uh, Marco Rubio. There, are, there <laughs> have been people uh, to come out about that. So, again, maybe it's not 48 or 52, you know, but, but there are people, and I think it's disingenuous so to, five, to assert five, that there are not Republicans coming out. I, first of all, I didn't uh, say there are no Republicans. I'm asking you, for the most part, to about not to the tune about 90, 95 percent. Republicans don't not saying jack. They literally are letting this man drive this nation over a cliff because they're scared to get a tweet against them. Listen, I, I think what the, the the point of this is is no, I'm not embarrassed uh, as a black Republican. I'm not embarrassed as a conservative because again, I think there there are reasonable people like Ben Sass. Uh, who who understand that his loyalty is to the people. Uh, and I think that the majority of the Republican Party understand that as well. And I think the voters understand that. Otherwise, we would not have uh, picked up seats in the House uh, as we did or, or kept the seats that we were expected to lose in the Senate. Are you embarrassed as a black Republican to see Donald Trump and his lawyers specifically targeting black people? They are only challenging results in two counties in Wisconsin. Uh, that has been walking in Dane, where 75% of all black people live. You had the Republican on the board of canvassers in Wayne County who literally said, let's certify the Wayne County results if we throw out Detroit. Rudy Giuliani actually said at a news conference, oh, Donald Trump, he won Michigan if we throw out Wayne County. Trump yelled and hollered and screamed, fraud, fraud, fraud in Philadelphia. They screamed, fraud, fraud, fraud in Atlanta. They are specifically talking about black people. Does that offend you that your party, the Republican Party, has such disdain for black voters that they are specifically targeting them? Yeah, so I think this is a, a narrative, again, that, that's not necessarily helpful. No, 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 no. It's, a, no, no, it's a question. It's a because question. Because it, when we look at this, it's not the Republican Party. There may be members of the Republican Party, but we don't have majority uh, of the Republicans in this country saying, one, specifically, uh, black voters need to not have their votes counted. Let me ask you That's very specific. Okay, happening. let me be very specific. The Trump campaign has filed for a partial recount of only two counties, Milwaukee and Dane County. What do those counties have in common with Detroit? Well, you know, other than the fact that they're heavily Democratic, they are some of the largest counties uh, in Wisconsin. Hold on, hold on, stop. Did you, did you leave out the black part? I mean, Milwaukee and Dane, 75% black. Detroit, 83% black. D did you leave out the black part? Again, I, I, don't, I don't understand the point of this. Of okay, this, how about uh, this here? Okay, 
So he's a perfect example. Show me a majority white Democratic county that the Republicans are trying to do a recount. Can you name one? Well, from, from my understanding, they're, they're doing recounts in several places. They're investigating uh, issues in Arizona. They're investigating what's nope, happening nope, in nope, Georgia. No, 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 no. Lawsuit uh, dropped. Lawsuit dropped in Arizona. Well, again, that that doesn't mean there are re there are many reasons why lawsuits get dropped. Let's be no, no, clear no. But, but there's no not, there's no pending lawsuit in Arizona. Again, I think the point is we're not talking about targeting black people. Again, just because there is we're a not? majority. W name me one Republican. If that's Trump, name me, please give me a comment where President Trump or Rudy Giuliani has specifically said, I don't want black people's vote to be counted. OK, when they say when the when the Republican on the board of canvassers in Wayne County says, let's certify all uh, all uh, votes in Wayne County, except Detroit, which happens to be 83 percent black. Are you saying that they're only saying that because they're Democrat votes or because it's black voters. Again, I go with what 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 people explicitly say. I mean, I think you can read into it one thing. No, no, that, no, 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 no. I, I, I can read into it. In fact, I, uh, in the control room. Please cue up Ned from Michigan. Here was a guy who, in the public hearing, uh, F. Lee, who actually said, "How are y'all only talking about irregularities in Detroit?" but y'all are saying nothing about irregularities that took place in a majority white town. You don't find that to be strange, that it's only the black people, but it's not the white people. Again, I think this is, this is a narrative that it's further dividing. When we separate blacks and whites, which is apparently what you're trying to do, this I'm not, is a narrative I'm not that Rudy is and Donald Trump is. Again, but I said from the very beginning of this conversation that we have someone who is a clear winner. Um, I think that that should be the conversation. There. So why? That's so why? Okay, well, if that should be the conversation, then why? Why won't did you vote for Trump? I did. Yeah. So why won't the guy you voted for? Why can't he accept it? Why can't he be a grown man and stop? Donald Trump literally. Did you see today? He literally went on television and said, "I won. I won the race." That's what he said. Again, I think there's a larger picture here that all Republicans are not Trump. We, we can't inquire into the mind of- But he's your leader. One. Well, again, I, I think that there are, there are several leaders. I mean, I think, again, I think uh, when you look at Ben- There's one Fett, president. Look at Mitt Romney. Mitt Romney, is that okay. a leader? Is Mitt Romney in the Republican leadership in the Senate? No. Who is? McConnell? Cornyn. Again, Thune. you see both of those people starting to push back against President Trump. Who? Cornyn made statements uh, earlier this week. Who? Which um, one? Uh, uh, John Cornyn from Texas. Jo Man, Lee, John Cornyn complained about Puerto Ricans voting in the presidential race when they don't even vote for president. Lee, I'm from Texas. He actually said it. Would you like for me to pull it up? I think my point is, is that Trump, you, again, you have a majority Senate most likely when these two, uh, when the incumbents win in Georgia. No, this is no, they may, may not win in Georgia. I, I don't know about that. David well, guess Perdue what? Y'all thought, thought Trump Donald. was going to win Georgia. That didn't happen. Certified today, Republican Secretary of State, certified Georgia for Biden. Again, I think the larger point is when you have folks like Mark Robinson in North Carolina, the first black Republican lieutenant governor, mind you, received more votes than both Tillis and Trump within uh, North Carolina. So hey, again, hey, hey, we see, have Lee, 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 that don't mean nothing. Roland Burris had the most votes ever in the state of Illinois when he ran for attorney general and lost when he was governor. Okay. No, but I think the larger point here is something, again, main, main, mainstream media doesn't want to uh, discuss and, and clearly not here is that there is a trend moving away from the Democratic Party. Where is it? Where's, first, of all, let me, first of all, let me correct you on a couple of things. One, it's not wise for you to say that we don't discuss it here when in fact we have discussed it. That's first. So you might want to pump your brakes on that one. 
But two, when you say there's a trend, a trend means multiple elections. Where's the trend? I think the trend is in the data. For example, we look at, uh, if we're looking at presidential races, Trump is getting, you know, some, some are saying 14 to 16 percent. In 2016 and 2020, they're saying he's getting closer to 20 to 25 percent. Actually, uh, no, actually, I've seen no data. I see no data that exceeds 20 uh, percent. So the 25 percent. And again, even with that one, we're still looking at that to determine that. So first of all, when you say the data, be real specific. Who? Well, there are several uh, research Name out there. There's Name Pew, them. there's Edison. There are several groups that have come out. In fact, um, we see that Pew has done a study that this is this is evident. It's evident one where you have Joe Biden getting fewer. You know, sure he got ninety percent of the black vote, but but again, Trump is able to shave off, and this has been indicative of the Hispanic vote from what was reliably Democrat. No, actually, well, actually, actually, when you break down the Hispanic vote, you have to break that specifically down what part of the country you're talking about. So, for instance, if you're talking about in Texas or on the Rio Grande Valley, that was the Tejano vote. When you talk about in Florida, specifically, that was Cuban and Venezuelan. He did, Joe Biden exceeded him when it came to Puerto Ricans. And so, we talk about Arizona, it was Latinos in Arizona who whooped Trump's behind, which is why he also lost Arizona, plus Native Americans. But here's the whole deal, though. You, I mean, you could go through all this, like, oh, the trend or whatever. Here's the deal. He lost. He lost. Donald Trump I, lost. I've seen that from the beginning. That, that's not an argument. I mean, if we want to talk about judges, we can talk about judges. No, 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 no. no. We're we, we going to talk about judges because that's also important because what you have is you have a clear di a direct attempt by Republican Party where Mitch McConnell blocked 100 judges from Obama because he wanted to control the courts. They blocked Merrick Garland, making up BS rules, appointed 225 judges. You don't find it shameful as a black Republican that out of 225 judges, the Federal Society can only find one brother? I mean, I, look, I know, I've been doing a lot of black Republicans. Accurate. I've been lying, I don't, how, how many black federal judges have they appointed? The, so according to a Pew study. No, 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 uh, no, 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 I didn't say the study. I'm talking about the actual judges who have been confirmed by the Senate. How many of the 225 judges that Donald Trump and Mitch McConnell and Republicans in the Senate have confirmed, how many of those 225 are black? Again, as of yesterday, is 227 judges. Okay, of the 227, of them, how many of them are black? Eight of them uh, have been black, and there have been two and, this week. And how many on appeal? Hold up, two this week. So praise the Lord for this week, because your numbers are looking bad. The issue, the question still here is this here. But wait, no, we, no, 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 hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. I'm going to ask you this here, again, of those judges, when you look at the grossly unqualified, they confirmed this week. A white woman, eight years out of law school, ain't never been in the courtroom, rated unqualified by the American Bar Association. You defend Mizell? Again, I think this is where you're distorting the facts because to say that gross uh, uh, number of his appointees have been uh, unqualified, you can't, that's just wrong. Here's that's the deal. Wrong. I'm asking you again. Do you think Catherine Mizell Eight years out of law school. Do you actually believe somebody eight years out of law school has earned a lifetime appointment as a federal judge? Look, Bruh. here's the deal. Here's the deal. I heard you talk about the ABA before. The ABA has had a history, there have been peer-reviewed studies about this, of them having bias towards Republican nominees. That has been documented. How many, of, how, how, many, how many judges in the ABA rank qualified that Trump appointed? How many, how many judges have they identified as Of the 227 qualified? judges that Trump and McConnell have appointed, how many of them did the ABA rank as qualified? Well, eight of them have been deemed not qualified. No, no, that's not what I asked you. So, I asked you, so how, I, 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 no, no, I asked you, of the 227, how many of them have been deemed qualified? Of the 227? Well, so, so if eight, so, so let me, so, so, so let me out. So if eight have been deemed Unqualified. Correct. And 227 have been appointed. That means the ABA deemed 219 to be qualified? Again, you, let's, so, look at, so let's look at the me, numbers. So are you telling me 
219 out of 227 means bias? What I'm, what I'm showing you is that the ABA first deemed Justin Walker, who's now a judge on the D.C. Circuit, to be unqualified. A year later, he came back to be appointed to the D.C. Circuit and was deemed well qualified. I'm asking you again. What? If if the, AD, if the ABA deemed 219 out of 22 and 27 to be qualified, that's 96.4%. You tripping on 3.6? No, this, this has gone back well before Trump made any of his appointments. The documentation, this particular study that I'm referring to uh, by Susan Smeller uh, was done in 2012. So, you know, there's a long history of anti-Republican bias within the ABA. Now, the next point is the majority of the Senate have confirmed the overwhelming majority of Trump's judges. So these aren't 50 to 49 uh, nominees. These are 75. These are 65. These are 90 to zero in many instances. <laughs> so it's not it, it's not that there are uh, people that are against them. Uh, again, these appointees that you labeled as conservative or, or radical in some cases um, have gotten bipartisan support. Um, so I, I'm not sure what the issue is there. Oh, well, the, the issue is this here. The issue is you have uh, Mitch McConnell, uh, who blocked a Democratic president, the first black president in U.S. history, uh, 100 different judges by design. And he said on Sean Hannity's show, they want to, they, they specifically are looking for young judges, 35 to 45, because, and he has said it, they want to control the federal courts long after he is gone. Question Dr. Dr. Neambi Carter for uh, F. Lee Francis. Well, I mean, I think the, you hit many of these things, but I think the larger question is, if if these parties are to do anything, they're to promote someone's vision of what they think the, the country should look like. And a majority of Americans have spoken and said, this is not the version of the country they would like. Yet you still have um, your co-partisans suggesting that that version that Americans support is illegitimate. So how then do you um, make a claim that the Republican Party is a party that actually cares about democracy when it looks like, at least at this moment, that many, not all, of the Republicans are stalwart against democratic process. So I, I guess I, I wouldn't say that at all about the Republican Party. In fact, I'd say that they're of the two parties, the two main parties, or, or more likely they uphold the Constitution. Uh, for example, appointing judges who uh, will apply the law as written, as it was publicly understood, uh, as opposed to judges who would just rather make legislation from the bench. Let me ask you a question. Hold on, hold on, hold on right there. Hold up, hold up. You, I'll let you finish that, but you said to apply the law as written and publicly understood. When? When it was written? That's correct. Well, if that's the case, F. Lee, me and well, your ass shouldn't sit here be talking. Because when the laws were written... The laws were not written with me or you in mind. The laws were not written for us to actually have a vote. The laws were not written for us to actually be full Americans. The laws were not written, the laws were not written for us to even own land. So when you say to, to judge based upon when it was written, well, hell, we were not factored in any of that when it was written. So obviously the law changes as we grow. Do you deny of that? Of course it changes. So of how course. can you say a, so how can you then say Democrat appoint Democrat. judges to rule based upon when it was written? Again, I, I think you're misinterpreting here. Actually, so I didn't. I heard you real clear. Except the law changes due to a democratic process, whether that's through amendments or congressional uh, legislation. There's a difference between that, which is democratically uh, accomplished, as opposed to judges who, for example, and, and I've written a law review article about this, uh, that will read something into, for example, Title VII. That was not what the framers in 1964 expected. Sex was not something that included gender identity or gender uh, orientation or, 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 or all of those things. It meant male and female. So an example of judicial activism, legislating from the bench, is 
instead of Congress passing a new law, which is what they have done before, is judges making the law from the bench. This is what this is what happened in the ACA case uh, with Sebelius and Obama. So, so no Republic. So Republicans Democrat. don't. Republicans are not activist judges. Just them liberal judges, right? Well, if you look at judging, I mean, this is this is again where if we look at the law as written, this is the process. So again, whether that's the Senate. Uh, appointing judges, approving judges, they're still a constitution. They don't, they don't go home because they lost elections in November. They still have work to do. And judges, again, are uh, required to apply the law, not make the law. Quadrico, what's the question? Uh, F. Lee, look, I, I, I'm a former Republican, right? Former being the operative word here. How do you reconcile uh, the fact that there are many, um, again, not all, but many within your party that, quite frankly, don't and will not acknowledge what you have, that this election, uh, that 70, almost 80 million people actually voted for Joe Biden and that he has won the election. Well, again, I think this is no different from how people felt in 2016, where it's a difficult thing to understand. Sure, you know, Rick Santorum said that uh, Trump needs and, and maybe his voters need time to process this thing. Uh, time to verify this election. I think it's clear um, that 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 Joe Biden is now the president elect. I can't speak for those people who uh, refuse to accept that or or just just refuse in some cases to accept the fact that the people have decided. Um, but you have a strong number of black uh, Republicans who are really pursuing this. Um, as a as a way of of opening people up from uh, the democratic policies that have essentially pulled black people back down, as opposed to allowing them opportunities with the Republican Party. <laughs> uh, if, if I could have just one more follow Patrick, question. go ahead. It's not only that they are not refusing to accept the results, but they're refusing to accept the results, and they're being violent in some cases, in the process, right? And I think that's the troubling uh, perspective here, right? How ethically then do you center yourself in a party that not only refuse to accept the facts, but that causes violence to people, and particularly people of color? Well, again, I, I, would, I would pose that same question to a Democrat who supports things like Black Lives Matter and Antifa, who calls his hundreds of millions of dollars in whoa, Minnesota? Whoa, 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 whoa. What, what, hold on, stop. Oh, no, wait, 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 wait. What Democrat supports Antifa? Name one. Uh, I'm sorry? What Democrat supports Antifa? They, they support what is behind. No, 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 no. This. You said, like, Democrats who support Black Lives Matter and Antifa. Name me a Democrat that supports Antifa. Well, I think you're hard pressed to separate the two. No, you're not. No, no, no. Hold up. I'm not hard pressed. Actually, rallies, I, no, I'm not hard pressed to separate the two. First of all, have have you actually talked to Antifa people and Black Lives Matter people? Have you actually been out in the streets and observed them? Have you? I have. Uh, I have read articles. About no, 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 no. This. I didn't ask you. Have you read articles? What I asked you was. Have you actually sat down and talked with Black Lives Matter activists and leaders and Antifa leaders, and have you been in the streets and actually observed them in action? Well, it's hard to get in the streets when they're actually. It's down not buildings. hard to get in the streets. Uh, Hell, you can see that happening. No, 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 Lee. It's not Washington, hard to get in the streets. All Oregon. you got to do is walk out your house. Now, maybe you're scared to go to a protest. I'm not. No. No, I, I don't think so. But I think, again, if we're talking about violence and we're, we're, we're saying that Republicans have a monopoly on violence. Who said action. that? You've got, Hold on, wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Who said that? Who said Republicans have a monopoly on violence? Who? Again, the point is. No, 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 no. You can't. See, Lee, you can't say stuff. And then when I ask you for it, for to back it up, then you go, the overarching point is, the larger point is, the bigger point is, no. What I'm saying is, don't say stuff if you can't back it up. I can. Look at, the, look at what's happening in Minnesota. Look at what happened. I lived in New York. Look at what happened in New York where they're burning down buildings. You've got Molotov cocktails being thrown. But no one wants to talk about that. Actually, actually, we actually we we have talk talked about, about it. Actually, we have talked about it. 
So to act to act as if, so again, when you say no one wants to talk about it, that in itself is a lie. We have literally talked about it on this show, other shows, MSNBC, CNN, Fox. It has been talked about. But what you but you said, you specifically said, Democrats who support Black Lives Matter and Antifa. And when I asked you for a simple fact, show me a Democrat who has come out in support of Antifa, and you can't. I can't. Oh. Look at the mayoral race uh, in Oregon. Look at what's happening in Washington. You have a mayor saying, I will implement these policies. You have people, uh, the mayor implement what the policies? summer of love. Hold on, implement what policies? What Antifa is talking about. No, 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 about. no, 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 no. See, hold on, no, 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 no. See, you say the mayor said, I will implement these policies. What policies? Then your answer is, policies well, what Antifa is talking about. The police. Defunding the police. Do you know uh, what that means? Do you even know what that means? So I, I just wrote a paper that will be published what is again it? on this. What is it? Well, it's self-explanatory. They want to take money away from the police. You have a group No, 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 uh, no. Hold on, hold on, hold on. And do what with it? Okay, so there are two things here. You've got a group who's saying defund the, the, the police, and you've got another group who's saying abolish the police. Those are the narratives that are, that are perpetrating. <laughs> See, again, uh, again, this is what happens when you shift. I specifically asked you, you said, the, you said that the mayor, mayor in Oregon embraces and supports Antifa. You got no facts. Then you said... He's Look all, at her I'll, comments. Then you said, I'll do your policies. I asked you what policies. Then you can't name them. See, did, see man, look. No, the, no, little, the, the little dance doesn't the work. Hold up. He's funding the police. Michael M. Hotel, what's your question? Uh, before I go to my next guest. Michael, what's your question for Lee? All right. First of all, uh, F. Lee Francis, thanks for coming on the show today and answering these questions, doing it extensively. You're one of the few uh, black Republicans that will do it this long and who has opposing views, because Candace Owens has been running for at least a year. Oh, hell, she's been running for me for three years, but go ahead. For three years? <laughs> we know right, she's but, scared of this heat. Oh, absolutely. This is an example of why this conversation right here. Um, so, one, uh, thanks for admitting that Joe Biden actually won the election, because a lot of black Republicans are not admitting that, one. Two, when are black Republicans like yourself and some of the other ones, the leading ones that have been trying to convince us to vote for Donald Trump, when you're going to hold a press conference to denounce what Donald Trump is doing, uh, Donald Trump just held a press conference today and lied and said he actually won the election. That's a blatant lie. Every, if, if people who can count know that's a blatant lie. So when you're going to hold a press conference to denounce what he's doing and encourage Emily Murphy to sign off on President-elect Joe Biden so that the proper transition funding can go to the uh, uh, Biden uh, uh, camp, Biden transition team. Listen, I, I have no problem with with Republicans in general, and specifically black Republicans, calling and saying we have a, a winner. Uh, I, I have no problem uh, with well, no, Republicans. No, that's not what he asked. What he asked is when are y'all as a, when are y'all black Republicans okay. as a collective going you're going to, to actually publicly call for that. Will y'all yeah. do it? Because have you have you have you have you Lee have you communicated with other black Republicans saying we need to stand up as black Republicans and publicly call for Trump to stand down, to stop attacking black voters and for him to concede the election. Will y'all do it? That's what Michael asked you. Will y'all do it? And, and stop disenfranchising, the, trying to uh, disenfranchise the votes of African Americans. So when, he asked you a question. Will y'all do that? Again, I think, for first of all, the disenfranchising, that's a separate piece here, and I don't see that really happening. But as far as getting the president as a black Republican and getting other black Republicans uh, to come out uh, and say that Joe Biden uh, is the president-elect, is the declared winner. Absolutely. I have no problem doing that. So when, so when y'all going to do again, it? When y'all going to do it? I have a problem. I asked when. When, when y'all going to do that? None of them have done that yet. When, when are y'all going again, to do it? There, there have been, uh, you know, I have spoken with people. I have called uh, people to say, listen, we need to stop this. There is a winner here. Uh, whether we like it or not, the reality is the people spoke. Uh, the people have and, and deserve to be heard. So, um, so, okay. so that's good. That, that's good, F. Lee Francis. You had the conversation. My question to you 
is when are you and the other black conservatives, especially the ones who were telling us that we should vote for uh, uh, Donald Trump, like Jack Brewer, okay, doing commercials. Got it. When, when are you and these other black conservatives are going to hold a press conference that's broadcasted to call on Trump and the people around him to right. stop this nonsense? Again, I think the president has his own prerogative. He has his his own agenda. Gotcha. But what I can say, and I will say to your audience now, we have a clear winner. Joe Biden is the president-elect. We don't have to like it, but it is it is what it is. Okay. All right, F. Lee Francis. Well, uh, we appreciate it. Uh, look forward to having you back for another conversation. Thanks a lot. Thank you. It's time to be smart. When we control our institutions, we win. We, win. we win. This is the most important news show on television of any racial background. Y'all put two, three, four, five, 10, 15, 20, 30 dollars on this and keep this going. What you've done, Roland, since this crisis came out in full bloom. Anybody watching this, tell your friends, go back and look at the last two weeks, especially of Roland Martin Unfiltered. I mean, hell, go back and look at the last two days. You've had sitting United States senators today, Klobuchar and Harris. Whatever you have that you have, you can bring to Roland Martin Unfiltered to support it. Please do, because this information may literally save your life. Watch Roland Martin Unfiltered daily at 6 p.m. Eastern on YouTube, Facebook, or Periscope, or go to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Support the Roland Martin Unfiltered Daily Digital Show by going to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. RolandMartinUnfiltered.com.